thanks, Debbie, and thanks to all of you here for your patience. One of the great experiences I have is to be the liaison or to work with athletic directors across the state. I try to, everything I try to do is to try to make things easier for you. So to help and keep consistent with that, if athletic directors here, if you would just type in the word canceled to your Twitter accounts and also to your outgoing email and just hit it repeatedly the next couple of days, I've saved you a lot of time. So, and I don't miss that part of it. Um, also, to all the athletic directors and really to school administrators here that make your facilities available for tournaments, uh, thank you unbelievably. Um, this winter, uh, especially in the northern half of the state, uh, basketball regional, we had to cancel five different regionals uh, in boys. We've had to cancel girls the last couple of years on a couple occasions. And for me to pick up the phone and to be able to call and ask you to host something at a moment's notice, it's not the easiest thing to do, and I will tell you I appreciate it. Now, for those of you that I also promise to look the other way on five sport regulation violations, uh, I'm not going to say I ever said that. Uh, so thank you very much for doing that. My, my part here is just to review quickly a couple of things on sport regulations. One of the things that I find, especially when new administrators come in, is a, a big misunderstanding or a lack of understanding the difference between why some of our things are voted upon. Dr. Ross and, and Debbie both just spent some time here talking to you about what you're going to be voting on by May 15th. There are other things that come down that you have to deal with that you don't vote on and so often I'm hit with who decided that? Why didn't we vote on that? And, and that's where the sport regulations come into play. Our general sport regulations that affect all sports, our individual sport regulations that affect each and indivi every individual sport. Our board of directors that represents you at the uh, state level as well as the OIAAA, even though they're an ex officio member, uh, represent different parties on our board of directors. They hear proposals, whether they be from me, whether they be from other members of our staff, or whether those proposals come from coaches associations. Our board of directors has to listen to those, and they make the determination whether those are going to be approved. So general sport regulations, sport regulations uh, for the specific sports are not things that are voted on by the membership but voted on by our board of directors and then implemented usually for the next year. Good example of that, um, as you know, uh, the start of sports seasons has been kicked around time and time again with continual changes. One of the things that our board of directors adopted for next year was a change in the start of football season to August 1st for practice. So just note that, I mean, this came out uh, on a press release as well, but uh, August 1st for everybody, whether you start uh, school on August 14th or whether you start school on August 28th or after Labor Day, everyone will get the opportunity to start practice on August 1st. And again, it is a specific sport regulation. One of the general sport regulations that I just want to review as quickly as I can, and there are several items in this referenced in your uh, blue manuals that you have at your tables, and that is uh, going into this year was the adoption of what was known as General Sport Regulation 8.6, or commonly more known as the Individual Instruction Regulation. And I think when you historically look at this, and especially for some of you that are a little older, uh, that coached you know, in the 70s or early 80s, many of you recall that for the longest period of time, the uh, regulations of the OHSA said that coaches could coach from this date to this date, meaning coaches could coach during the defined period of time in their season. In basketball, it was from the day one of practice up until the end of the season, your last tournament game. That was the defined period of time. Many of us do remember in the early 90s when it was put in that now schools, or all, all sports, excuse me, could coach for 10 days in June and July. And many of us that coach during that period of time will also say, yes, that was also the end of individual instruction fundamental camps, and that was also the end of the advent of team camps. And a lot of changes took place in the early 90s when that went into effect. Effective September 3rd of this, past, of this school year, 
a monumental change became that we now have told coaches that you may provide individual instruction to kids any time outside the season of play except for during no contact periods. And again, what a major change that was. Now saying that you as a high school coach or your high school coaches could now give that same instruction that private instructors could give outside the season of play except during your no contact periods. Again, with some very strict parameters. And I just want to quickly review that um, in that because I get so many questions about it. But this regulation now does permit school coaches to provide that individual instruction outside the season of play except during no contact periods to no more than four individuals in all combined facilities where the instruction is taking place. And that has a very far-reaching definition. I want to go back to, um, I was asked to chair a committee. That committee became known as a task force. And there are several people in here that actually served on that committee. Now, one of the things that we wrestled with for the longest time, we looked at things like, well, you know, should we just take those 10 days in the summer and say, to heck with 10 days, let's, 61 days in the summer. Let's just let it go. The more we wrestled with that, the more we came to the reality of that committee was charged with a simple task. Provide a, or make a recommendation to our board of directors that allowed our coaches to do what individual instructors currently are allowed to do. 20 years ago, there were no such thing as shot doctors. 20 years ago, there were no such thing as pitching instructors out there. But they've developed. I'll use the sport of basketball because I, the one I coached most recently. But there are so many people out there now that give shooting instruction that are non-school related. They have no background checks. They have no all the requirements that we in the Ohio Department of Ed require. They're, they're unmonitored. And many of those individuals, don't take me wrong, there are good ones, but many of those individuals are the same individuals that teach somebody to shoot or they give individual skill instruction on shooting and boy, they're giving that message to the kid that if I were your high school coach, let me tell you, you'd be starting all the time and you'd have free reign to shoot whenever you want to shoot. So we wanted to give our coaches that same opportunity, not to say that, but to counter that a little bit, but provide them the instruction that our coaches are trained to give. But we had so many challenges. And what were those challenges? We feared about burnout. We were very scared about burnout. And by the way, not just burnout of the kids, burnout of the coaches. Coaches are being asked to do more and more. I, if I would ask a show of hands on how many people raised their supplemental contracts for coaches you know, to accommodate this extra instruction, I don't think I'm gonna see a single show of hands on that. So we were worried about that burnout, not just for kids, but for coaches as well. So, and again, we're still concerned about that. You see it all the time. I've seen overnight. I saw a coach in this area, you know, wants to spend more time with his family. Can you blame him? So the more that's required, we were very concerned about that. As I said, too, we were very concerned about the pay or lack thereof. We were very concerned about chaos developing, knowing that you as administrators are going to now have to monitor something that everyone is going to want that time. The greatest part about this regulation though, the greatest part that developed in this, uh, when I was coaching, my former, one of my former assistant coaches is now a head coach in the Columbus area. In October, uh, early October, he gave me a call and just ripped into me and said, you have no idea how difficult you have made this for me to work out my team. It's become so difficult because you're handcuffing me by limiting to, to four people in all the combined facilities. He said, I don't have enough hours of the day to work out my team. I hesitated and I thanked him tremendously because he highlighted something that came out of the committee as, as well as our staff, and that was we never ever designed this as a team workout program. Not what one whatsoever. We were concerned with meeting what many people had requested, and that is I want to teach my kid how to shoot. I want to teach my kid how to pitch. We could all argue that every kid needs help with shooting, 
and maybe they do. And every kid, every kid's a pitcher, I get that. But we wanted to provide that opportunity and we felt we did that by limiting and, and really uh, putting some parameters on it. The biggest parameter that's out there is the, in all the combined facilities. In all the combined facilities. So we've had the question, can I have four individuals in my junior high and four individuals at the high school and provide that instruction at the same time? And we said no. And we've given nearly every interpretation possible on what you can and cannot do. And they're located, by the way, in the back of your book. And every coach has received this. There's a 10-minute video that you can watch on it, explains it, allows them to download these same Q&As. Uh, approximately three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago, every basketball coach, the winter sport that I administrate, every high school head basketball coach in Ohio received this again as a reminder to review. So no head basketball coach employed in your schools, and I say that because I administrate the sport of basketball, could say to you, hey, I never heard anything about that, or I know I can do this. I think I can do this. No, every single thing was cleared up. Let me go back to that four in all combined facilities where the instruction is taking place. Why we said no to four at the junior high and four at the high school. One of the reasons, and there are many examples uh, similar to this, I use Bucyrus High School as an example. Bucyrus High School, I, I originally thought that their junior high was right across, their junior high gym was right across the hallway from the high school uh, gym. Tony informs me it's two doors down uh, in the hallway and then to the left. But it's right across the hall, basically. What we didn't want to get into was saying, well, you know what? If your junior high gym is five miles away, it's okay. But the ones that are across the hall or in the same building aren't okay. Honestly, it was easier to say no and put the parameters on it that way. And again, we have to go back to what the intent of that regulation was and that was to provide individual skill instruction, not put in your offenses, not work on defensive team stuff. So we'll review it again. I've encouraged all sport groups, coaches, they wanted this so bad, they need to make it work because each and every year our board's gonna look at it and if there's chaos with it, I swear they'll take it away. So I encourage that. Now, let me quickly, as I close, uh, simply say that, again, the Q&As are in the back of this booklet. The overview on how and why it was enacted is also in that booklet. It has been emailed to coaches. It is out there on social media. It's been communicated in rules and turp meetings at the start of each and every team sports season. And also, I think on Thursday of this week, uh, Tim Street will also put that back up on the front page of our web page. I would encourage each and every one of you, if you haven't done it already, um, and I'm, I'm partial here when I say this because, I, number one, I have the microphone. Number two, it's the sports I administrate. But uh, I, I, if you haven't already, please encourage your basketball coaches in particular and all of your coaches to go to the rebounders reports that are still linked off of our main page. And I have several things on there that very much detail from no contact periods to summer rules. For those people that always say in those summer rules, yes, 10 days in the summer, 24 hours in a day, I get 240 hours to coach. It doesn't work that way and it's very spelled out in the things on my rebounders reports. Debbie puts them up for volleyball. Um, I think she calls them this week in volleyball. I have them in baseball. I'm a little slow in getting them up there. But I do explain a lot of these different types of regulations for your coaches. So, you know, the information is out there for them. And again, I emphasize again that these will be put out there on our website. I think it's on Thursday that Tim's going to put those up. So thanks very much.